Welcome guys, Matt from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today on a brand new New Age Manta Ray with a full lithium off-grid setup running all of the Victron gear in this one. I will give you the rundown, I'll give you the specs of the system and then I'll go through some of the things that we're going to run um, including the microwave and the air conditioner at the same time. So this one here, a full factory integrated setup, so this works on top of the factory system. What this is, is a full off-grid lithium package with the ability to run the air conditioner, microwave, and all of your factory CS outlets on this. So it's, a, it's a, an overlay system, so that means this can be reverted back to factory if you ever sell the van and you want to pull the big ticket items out, which is obviously the inverter and the lithium batteries. So out they come, reverted back to factory, and happy days. 560 amp hours of PowerPool custom-made Australian lithium batteries here. They've got a continual discharge of 250 amps per battery. So that means one battery can support this inverter at full load, which is what I want. It's a redundancy thing. If something fails, he has the ability to keep going on one battery if one battery decides to turn off. Um, these are a handmade battery of next level quality. You guys have seen my other videos. I'm super stoked about using these. I've got really, really good results under high load. So they are feeding the inverter, the Victron Multi, 12 3000 VA inverter with 120 amp charger inbuilt, fully programmed for a lithium setup with that charge rate. These batteries will happily accept that any day of the week. Now we've gone for a split solar setup on this. Now we've managed to squeeze 960 watts on the roof of this. So we've done two solar systems on this, as you can see here with the two solar controllers. We've got the MPPT 3100 and we've got the MPPT 5100. That's obviously taking care of the larger array. This is on the smaller array. The reason we do that, um, as you've seen with my other videos, is for shading. So the smaller one here is on the passenger side of the van, and that runs that panel and the one sort of towards the rear. And mine runs the array that runs along the driver's side. Good thing about this is there's not a lot of shading issues on the roof, so these guys are gonna see like super, super awesome replenishment once that sun comes out. Um, even in winter, you know, you're still gonna get a lot more power than you would with a smaller system with this setup because of the way that these work together and they will track. So we're running the 40 volt strings on these. So we're running a higher voltage string just to get more out of the day earlier on in the day. And obviously late in the afternoon, having that higher voltage into each of these controllers allows them to function better really early. So it's, you know, this is charging at 13, 14 volts. When you run a parallel system and you're only at that sort of 18 volt range, it's, it's still, there's not much of a window for opportunity for the MPPT tracker to do its job properly. When you increase that voltage, it's got more, more window space to work with. So it, you just get a better yield over the day and the proof's in the pudding. 
you can log on to each controller to see the yield um, with a history with each of that. So, um, so that's a solar 960 on the roof. That is on top of the DC charging. Now on this one, we've gone for the BCDC Red Arc 1250 with a side Anderson plug for portable unregulated fold out panels if he wants to add to the 960 watts on the roof. If he parks in the shade, that'll run through the Red Arc perfectly and that's set for lithium. Now that's a 50 amp DC to DC charger, guys. Now because the solar input on this is for the portable and not the roof, this will function while these are functioning. What does that mean? That means when old mate plugs his vehicle in and he's driving down the road some four or five hours or whatever, you're going to get the 50 from the Red Arc, okay? That's why he's driving through the Anderson plug. 50 amps going into the battery. If the sun's out and those batteries need a charge, the solar will work on top of that. It will not shut one down. So this one has like potential to pump in up to 100 amps of charge from the vehicle and solar combined. So if old mate's camping and he wakes up and he he sucks, I don't know, 300 amp hours out of this battery bank. So 300, okay? If it's a sunny day, in three hours of driving, he's going to replace that. This has the ability to charge at that rate. It is monstrous. We're super happy with these setups, We're getting really good results. And you know, why not? You've got free energy flicking around, the sun's out, you're driving, you have an alternator spinning. Why shut one off? You utilize both to fill up the lithium. And lithium love being charged. They you generally feed it an amp and it'll take it. It's um, the, the, the low internal resistance of a lithium battery is far superior and it's it just, it works. So those are the charge rates. So I programmed the 120 amp into this. So when he's on mains, this will pump in 120. Solar will be on top of that. Now this is all controlled. This whole setup is all controlled on the Servo Touch 50 display, which I'll show you guys in a second. He has full control over his power input on the side of the van. So if he's running a generator or he's on a 10 amp power supply at a station stay or he's at home um, and he you know, has one of those amphibian converters, well that limits you to 2400 watts, all right? If you exceed 10 amps, um, the breaker will go off. Now exceeding 10 amps would be anything over 2400 watts. That would be air conditioner running, microwave on and say, I don't know, they put the toaster down. If you exceed it, that breaker will go off. Well, that doesn't work with the Victron. The Victron, you can tell what it pulls from the input, from the controller, it's, and it's all done up to there. So the the transfer switch in this is automatic as well, which means if he unplugs power or the generator turns off, this will automatically flick over to batteries. Um, if it needs more power than that 2400 watts that you've set for this um, on the input, it'll supplement the rest of it with battery power. It's very clever, so none of these um, you know, generators that bog down and clip off, now that, that won't happen with the Victron. If you set that to suit your generator, it will only pull from the generator what you set it to. It's very simple and it's all up on the touch display, which I'll show you guys in a second. So there we have it, guys. Now this is all neatly tucked away. You can see we've got the division board on this. We've, we've been able to do that because we've liaised with the customer of what he's fitting in this area so we can get it there. So that's the setup. It's all easy to read. You know, anyone can get here and you've got fuses labeled. It's all neatly spaced out. You can see it. We've got the vents on the back of these. We're able to do the venting right behind the solar controllers in this one. Um, most of the jobs we can't, we have to put vents in other places, but we're able to get them right behind each solar controller. So we're happy days with that one. Nice and open here. Plenty of space around it. Got 120 mil odd there. Um, you know, more on this side. And it's all secure down, ready to go. So there we have it, guys. Six and a half kilowatt hours, I think it's 6.7 um, they test out to be um, in kilowatt hours. Paul, uh, I think he derates them actually, always test out a little bit more. So these came in at 574 amp hours combined. Um, and when Paul makes them too, um, and I put my order in, he makes these batteries as one. So even though they are two separate batteries, he does all the four cells that are in there. He um, parallels them up and he discharges and charges them all together. So what we get is basically a matched cell even though the batteries are separate, they're all matched together. So both batteries work in unison like perfectly. And yeah, he's one of the only guys doing it. So if you guys want some lithium batteries, hit him up. Powerpool Australia. Um, expect to wait though, he's pretty busy, just like I am. So 6.6, 6.7 kilowatt hours of storage if you want to work in kilowatt hours there, um, or 570 odd amp hours there, 560 rated. Um, you know, they're testing more. Got the Multi Plus 12 3120 inverter charger running on all the factory outlets. Got the two solar controllers here for the split charge. Got the Red Arc DC charger, 50 amps here with the side mounting Anderson plug for portable. Um, there we have it guys. I'll do the mandatory rundown stuff. I will run the air conditioner. We've got a Gree 
AC in this. Now, if you see my other videos, these aren't too bad. Um, not as efficient as the Harriers or the inverter style ACs or the Truma Adventor, but these, they're not too bad. Um, but I'll run it for you. Uh, it's freezing cold here, so I have to put it on heat and probably draw a little bit more on heat. They always do. Either way, we'll run it. I'll put the microwave on. Um, it's a brand new van, so there's no appliances set up in this yet for, um, for these guys to go away. So we've got the microwave on, run the AC, and I'm in a shed, so I can't even test the solar, but I'll put some photos up of the solar around the roof. You guys can check it out and see what you think. There we go. Enjoy that setup. So we'll leave it on we'll leave it on this screen. This is the screen I like to use with all the Victron stuff. It's just easy to read. You know, there's your battery. We're sitting on 99%, and it's, it's easy to see. There's your voltage. There's your current draw. So we're pulling 3.5 amps. That'd be lights and, you know, probably the inverter on standby. And that's it, obviously, zero solar, we're in a shed, and that's your AC load. So the inverter on standby, that would that would probably be, be the microwave on standby, I dare say. Either way, um, I like to, a really good rule is, you know, shut your inverter down, leave it on charger only. There you go. So that would be, yep, that's off. So charger only, base of the van is in factory form. If you put power into the side now, um, everything will come on. And if you pull power, everything will turn off. So this is the state your caravan should be left in all of the time. Now, when you go free camping, this is all you gotta do. There you go. We're on, we're ready to go. So what we'll do, we'll hit the mic right, eh? So we'll go 30 seconds, and then we'll, I'll crank it more than that. Go mode, I can't see, there's the sun. We'll go 30, because it's like, I reckon, 10 degrees here in Adelaide. And now I'm in a shed. It is really cold. This winter spell's kind of come right in. So that was the air conditioner kicking in. I if you heard the compressor then, but we'll be drawing now. Get this. Go back to the other screen. It's easy. 180-odd amps, you saw there. Take note of um, what that AC draws. We'll get it to kick in again. I don't think it's kicked in. It's rising now, that'd be the, uh, that's the compressor. I can feel that warm air coming through now. Most reverse cycle um, air conditioners, they tend to pull a bit more on heat. Um, this bears true for pretty much the Harriers as well, and even the Ibis 4s. You guys that have the off-grid setups will put it on to heat and you'll notice it just smashes power. Not recommended, that's why we run diesel heaters and gas heaters and such likes like that one. So. Geez, it'd be good if they fitted that straight, wouldn't it? It's just a shadow. <laughs> I've got limited light in here because I'm in a shed. I got my torch, so it's kind of put a shadow on the on the angle there. I'm one of those guys that would come to your house and straighten up your um your picture frames. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Now it's running on heat. It'd be pulling. So it's still only pulling 700. And, I'll show you. 770. It will rise. It has to. It's way up now. If that settles at that, I'd be very impressed. No, she's going up. Cool. It's definitely running now, guys. Right, so this is the beautiful thing about the Victron setup. So if I hit, that's the microwave and the air conditioner at the same time. I could go more easily. I don't have any appliances here to test, guys, but that's why we're using the PowerPool batteries because of their continual discharge rating per battery is 250. So this is nowhere near the limit, nowhere near the limit. Absolutely nowhere near it. And you remember, this is logging everything, guys. Stop that now. Like forever, you know, it will log everything. Whenever I need to see something that's on the VRM portal, I can log in, I can do firmware updates, I can check old mate solar production. Um, oh, I forgot. Yeah, we put the Ruby temperature in this one for him because he's got the Vitra Frigo compressor fridge. So we're doing these now with the, um, the off-grid setups for customers as an option. So, uh, and you know, he can add as many as he wants. These are little Bluetooth sensors. You might've seen a few videos floating around. Pretty much you pull the little tag, it activates the battery. It'll pop up there on the Bluetooth and you just select it and rename it whether or not it's for a fridge or a battery area. But you know, you can have one in the freezer, one in the fridge, one in your battery area, one in your outside boot, wherever they're, they're, they're wireless. They're bloody excellent. So no more, you know, manual temperature you can just put that in there or even better put it at the back like you know where it's a bit more accurate so i'll just chuck that in there for him now 
and everything's up on here. So if I want to see what's going on with the battery, you click it and I can see everything that's happening right now at the given moment. Take note of the time to go, guys. I'm getting no solar. It's telling me I've got six odd hours remaining. Six. So the current usage running that GRI air conditioner on heat, which is not advised, I'm getting over six hours. I see it's going up. That's because it's, it's figuring out on the fly how much time remaining at the current usage. It's very smart and the current usage is up the top there for you to see. So I can see consumed amp hours. We've used nearly 15 amp hours from that 560 odd amp hours there. State of charge, 97%. Alarms, history, I can look at everything. You know, I'll, the amount of times you've charged the batteries, full cycles, full discharges, very clever. It gets right into depth. When you log on to the VRM portal with this, it's even more in depth. Um, when you log on, you get graphs, uh, or graphs. <laughs> you get graphs, you can data log everything, and it holds a history for a very long time. Now, this there's no onboard Wi-Fi on this, so I'm gonna hotspot it to old mate's phone. If these guys get an onboard Wi-Fi system, then I will have it saved in there, so whenever they turn on their little RV Wi-Fi or their Teltonica, um, you know, modem or a Nighthawk, whatever they've got, it'll instantly connect to it and instantly start data logging. And it can come on and off, on and off as it pleases. The point is, I have full control over it completely remotely on my smartphone or anywhere in the world. And it just makes it easier for, just for data logging and for me to see anything. And especially if Victron release any software updates, I can notify customers or I just, most of the time I just do it remotely without them even knowing. They don't need to know, it's me accessing the controller to update the firmware to keep things, you know, current and update. If there's a bug fix or if there's a, a display change, you know, they'll get that option there, so. Thank you.